hey folks and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video we're going to be taking a look at a setup that we've recently started running on our multiplayer server and I've absolutely fallen in love with the challenge it presents to players. We'll cover how to set up an endless winter style playthrough, what mods you'll need for the best experience, why exactly I've been loving it so much and some basic tips that I've learned from my first couple of sessions. If you find this video gives you something new to play or you just find it entertaining drop it a like and subscribe to the channel for some more videos just like this one. So what is cryogenic winter? Now this is essentially the most important part of setting up your playthrough and what brings the most challenge in this kind of run. The cryogenic winter mod brings in an unnatural cold front dropping temperatures to sub-zero levels. On easy difficulty temperatures will drop to up to minus 60 degrees celsius or minus 76 fahrenheit and that's just the easy mode. On normal difficulty, this goes up to minus 80 degrees Celsius or minus 112 Fahrenheit. And on the hardest difficulty, finger freezing temperatures of minus 155 degrees Celsius or minus 247 Fahrenheit. So before taking your first jump into this kind of setup, know that it's going to be incredibly cold and life will be made difficult for you. But you can always dial it back to the easy mode if you struggle with the start. For the best experience, experience, I'd recommend turning off power instantly, since buildings will automatically be kept heated whilst the power is on, and that takes most of the challenge out of it if you can just dip from house to house to avoid getting too cold. This game mode is built to present a test of survival, so we want to try and preserve that if we can. When it comes to the other mods you're going to need, there's a few that I'd recommend for the best experience, but to save going over them all in this video, I'm going to highlight one or two important ones, and if you want to pick and choose between all of the ones in our multiplayer server, well there's a link in the description to the full mod pack for that as well. If you want things just as we are running them, just enable all of the mods in that collection. Now if I had to choose a couple of mods from this collection I'd consider essential, I'd start with the snow is water mod. Essentially this just means that whenever it does snow, your rain collectors will fill up at half speed as if it would when it was raining, instead of being left empty like they would be in the vanilla style game. You're going to get a lot of challenges in this start of playthrough and with the cryogenic winter mod it won't actually rain it will only snow so this makes rain collectors viable under the conditions presented by the mod pack. Next we have sapphires heaters. This is a work in progress mod but essentially all it does is add a range of portable heaters to the game. They are rare and heavy to carry but are incredibly useful to have around your base if you're doing some construction projects out in the cold or want to bring a heat source with you during your travels. Lastly the 10 years later mod. One of my favourite mods of all time, this is going to give your world that lost civilization look where everything is overgrown. Not only that, but sometimes clearing vegetation or vines will reward you with small foraging finds like mushrooms, berries or even dead animals. And believe me when I say that you'll appreciate that when your fingers are falling off to frostbite and you're struggling to find food. Before we move on to talking about why I've been enjoying this sort of playthrough so much and how it changes your gameplay, I just want to brush over some settings recommendations really quickly as well. My biggest advice for this sort of run is to remember that this is a different kind of survival than Project Zomboid usually presents. Sure, you'll still be battling zombies, but you're more so battling the elements. If you're someone that likes to run a lot of zombies by default, I'd consider maybe turning them down just a tad, because you're going to find it's a lot harder to fight quite as frequently as you would usually. Aside from that, keep the loot settings low. We actually opted to turn everything down to extremely rare and as I know the incredibly rare option is coming soon if you happen to be watching this after that update has been made maybe considering lowering to that setting as well. I made gas levels in gas stations as low as possible and gas in cars was lowered too. Again this is a fight for survival in a different sense to the usual project Zomboid so feel free to adjust your settings to match that. Ultimately though it is your playthrough don't be afraid to change things to suit your preference. So a little about my experience with the eternal winter playthrough so far. When I first jumped in, my immediate response was something along the lines of, oh f this, f this game, and f 
fuck you. But as time went on and I tried another run, I started to get a taste for the challenge. Speaking as someone with many hours in Project Zomboid, it's been a while since I felt my game had any real difficulty to it, and it's really driven me to play more, so that's great for me I suppose. I'd imagine this isn't necessarily a game mode for new players though, I, I could be wrong, but if you're struggling with the standard Project Zomboid, I can see this being a step too far because it really ramps things up. I was barely able to make it past a few buildings before I was losing health to the cold, and the clothing I was finding on zombies just wasn't enough to keep me insulated. It really makes you think on your feet, this sort of setup, as you're always scrambling to find the next source of heat in the early stages, but are driven onwards away from the warmth of a fire by things like hunger, thirst, and progression. In the end, I found success with one of my spawns, which placed me at McCoy logging camp outside of Moldraw. Now, there were upsides and downsides here, as I had all the fire fuel that I'd need and pretty quickly found the supplies needed to make an actual fire, but we can't have everything and what I was lacking here was a good source of food. Without the necessary clothing to keep me insulated on a long hike, my options became limited to foraging, so that's how I made it in this particular scenario. I foraged, I pulled down vines and vegetation and carved out a little home for myself inside a shipping container. It was small enough to keep heated with a simple campfire and as the building wasn't wood it wouldn't set fire. And in the future I'll have time to clear out the local zeds to try and find some suitable insulated clothing for a longer trek. So I'm hoping that what all of this basically shows is that even for an experienced player this style of setup made me think completely differently and really put me through my paces. It made me explore avenues of the game that I hadn't needed to learn before, like something as simple as how to start a fire without matches or a lighter in order to survive, which I will cover in a moment. Now this brings me nicely to the last and main section of this video, and I will say if you want to go in blind it's probably best to turn away now, but if you're looking for a couple of tips or want to come back to this later on, I'll leave a chapter right here so that you can get some tips for surviving in this frigid new frontier. So first things first, let's take a look at how the cold affects you when the temperature drops to its lowest points. I quickly found during my runs that it wasn't long at all before my movement and attacks were slowed by the cold, which presented a real challenge because as you can imagine, when you first start your playthrough, there's a lot of zombies around that you might want to clear out. So be aware that your attacks will be slower and as such, there's more time for zombies to grab you between said attacks. The best strategy here is to take your time, pull smaller groups and don't get overconfident. After a certain amount of time in the cold, you'll also start to lose health, the only way to stop this being to warm up. When you're getting started, you may need to resort to some drastic measures here, so there's a few ways you can keep yourself warm until you get set up properly. Firstly, car heaters. If you're lucky enough to find a car with a key, some gas and a working engine, make full use of it. At first, I thought the heaters might rely on the battery, but I was wrong in my assumption and it does come down to the engine. Basically, if the car will start, the heater will work and you can warm yourself up. Next is layering up. In those early stages when you're trying to gain as much protection against the cold as possible, try on various pieces of clothing and try to stack up as many layers as you can. Things like long johns can be worn under pretty much every item of clothing, for example, and adds an extra layer of insulation. Sweaters can be worn with both a t-shirt and a shirt, and you get the idea from here. Stack on as many layers as you can because you are going to need it. Something else to bear in mind here, if you know the map well and find yourself spawned near any of the military surplus stores, try to make your way there as quickly as possible. These are often great locations for things like winter hats, scarves, and padded clothing to provide you with the best protection against the cold. Grabbing these items early dramatically increases your chances of survival. If you're lucky enough to find an axe and a screwdriver, this is all you'll actually need to start a fire. I didn't know this when I first started the playthrough, but a screwdriver will allow you to drill a hole into a plank. With an axe, we can break down a door or two and get some planks. So drilling into one of them, and this becomes a notched plank, which we can then use to get a spark for a fire. We'll also need either a long stick, which can be obtained by sawing planks with a garden saw or hacksaw, or we can use a branch, which can be found by foraging. 
find either of these and we're ready to start a fire with those planks from breaking down doors. You might need to rip up some clothes to actually act as tinder, which are readily available on zombies, and the fire won't be that strong to start, but you can quickly add more fuel to keep warm, especially if you have an axe to collect some logs. Keep in mind that the colder you get, the lower your core body temperature is going to drop, and thus, just like in real life, it will take you longer to get warm. The best thing you can do is to try and keep yourself from getting cold in the first place, otherwise you're going to need to spend some time by the fire to warm up again. Once you have the tools to make campfire materials, carrying some with you at all times is advised and try to make sure that you have what's needed to strike up that fire when you place it too. That way you can always deploy one in a pinch if needed. Also, the smaller the space, the faster that space will become heated, hence why I opted for a small container for my starting base. Indoor spaces will always shelter you from wind chill as well, so you can hop between buildings at the start of your run to slow the rate at which you get colder. If you can't make a fire, there's one or two more activities that you can do to keep yourself warm for that little bit longer. Jogging, sprinting, or exercise can wear you out in excessive doses, but used in small increments, it can raise your core body temperature and keep the cold at bay. Do some exercise if you need to keep warm and don't have what's needed to make a fire. Be careful though, if you start to sweat, your clothes will become damp, and if your clothes are damp, the cold is going to get to you much faster. It's all a delicate balancing act, but it can buy you a few more minutes to find the supplies you need. If you're a veteran of Eternal Winter playthroughs and have some tips that might help first timers, go ahead and drop them in the comments for me. As always, I'd love to use this video to make things easier on those that are struggling with this kind of setup, and it's a great place for everyone to share their advice. If you'd like to give this sort of playthrough a go for yourself in a multiplayer environment, our Patreon server is hosting this for the month of November and has just started its fresh wipe the other day. If you're interested in supporting the channel and joining the patrons on the server, there's a link in the description. As always, a huge thank you to all of my existing patrons for their unwavering support, and I hope if you don't hate me after the frostbite gets to your typing fingers, I will see you all in the next one.